to improve your performance, you have to follow the ancient advice, know thyself. Ray Stanford asked me, he said, do you know who you are? I said, do I know who I am? Yeah, I know who I am. I'm Bob. No, he said, that's who you think you are. That's not who you are. He said, Bob and Proctor are just two words. That's your name, but it's not you. I said, what? Well, he said, you're not your name. I'm not my name. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? I'm not my name. Okay. I said, well, this is me. No, he said, that's your body. You've never heard anybody work, phone into work and say, body's not coming in today. It's sick. <laughs> You've never heard anyone say, am hand or am leg. We say, my hand, my leg, my name, my body. These are all things we have. He said, your results. Now, I knew I was in trouble. I was 26. I was unhappy. I was sick. I was broken. I just found out I was lost. I didn't even know who I was. You see? <laughs> Well, if you're going to know yourself, if, it's, you know, if you're going to change your life, you've got to change yourself. If you're going to change self, you have to know who self is. Now, think of this for a moment. You and I have infinite potential. Now, I said before, I don't know how much infinite is. I just know it's a lot. It has no beginning and no end. That's, that's the potential we've got. We've got all of this power, yet if you watch the way most people live, you would think that they were just about out of juice. A lot of people, when their heart stops beating, it's going to be a formality. I mean, they just, they just sort of sit. They never really get it going. Yet we have infinite potential. We're dealing with something pretty big. If we're going to find out something about ourselves, we have to look at this. You say, this is over my head. No, it's not. I teach this to kids. I got it. This all tied into the science of getting rich, rich resources are lying dormant within us. Let's look at it a different way. You see? You and I are spiritual beings. There's only two sources of reference to go to to find out anything about ourselves. One's science and the other's theology. You'll hear people say they're having a spiritual experience. They're not having a spiritual experience. They are spiritual. They're having a physical experience. We're spiritual beings living in physical bodies, and we've been gifted with an intellect. Most people really don't understand that part, but that's where the power lies, all right? And our emotional state is going to be determined by how we use our intellectual factors. Andrew Carnegie told Napoleon Hill, he said, any idea that's held in the mind that's emphasized, that's either feared or revered, will begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate physical form that's available. You see, Dr. J.B. Ryan said the mind is the greatest power in all of creation. Very few people understand it. If you go on our website, you just go to bobproctor.com, you'll see a quote there by Dr. John Mike, a psychiatrist from Florida. He said, I taught him more about the mind in one year than he'd learned in four years of medical school, five years of psychiatric training. And what I taught him was just what a Dr. Roter taught me. I was always amazed by that. I thought, what do they teach you in medical school? You know, and, and what we're doing is getting in at the non-physical side of ourselves, and that's where all the power lies. It's a beautiful concept as we start to understand it. What do we need? We need understanding. You really want to change your income, you've got to change your understanding. Now, there's only two things you have to know to really make things happen big in your life. Number one, you have to know where you are, and number two, you have to know where you're going. Now, you see, most programs get to focused on where you're going. That's very important that we have a goal. You've got to know where you're going. But what happened to me that was totally different is Ray Stanford got me to focus first on where I was. He got me to look at what I was doing with my life, got me to take responsibility. He said, your results aren't bad and they're not good. They're just, just results. Nothing's bad or good except our thinking makes it so. He said, you have to ask yourself, are those the results you want? And I said, no. Well, he said, if you will pay attention and you'll do what I suggest, I can show you how to change it. You see? And my whole life started to change. Most people get us focused on the goal. If we don't know where we're at, we're not going to... Let's suppose we all bail out of a plane and safely land somewhere on the planet. Our objective is to get to this room. Now, we know where this theater is. We know where this room is. Our problem is we don't know where we are. Now, let's say it's overcast. We'll build a ridiculous situation. It's overcast. Um, there's um, no street signs. There's no wind. Uh, there's no compass. There's no map. There's no people. 
But we know we're on the north. I mean, we could be in uh, Milwaukee heading towards the Canadian border. We could be in Los Angeles heading towards uh, Tijuana. You could be in Atlanta heading towards uh, Miami. We could be right outside this theater and walk away from it. If we don't know where we are, it won't matter where you're going. So you see, we've got to take a good, honest look at ourselves. What am I doing? What works? What doesn't? Who am I? And as we really get a grip on this, everything in our world will begin to change. Now, I'm going to run through this very quick, and then we'll have a break, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to show you some simple things about the mind and how to make the shift that you want to make. You see, what we're seeking always is greater awareness. We're always wanting to raise our level of, res a level of awareness because our results are an expression of our level of awareness. And the only way to improve results is to increase our level of awareness. All right? Now, effective goals inspire us to move to increasingly higher levels of awareness. Now, here, yes, what you'll find that people say they want. They want greater health, happiness, peace of mind. All these results are the, are the result of a higher level of awareness. So it's awareness that we should be seeking. We want to raise this, and everything else starts to happen. It happens like unadulterated magic. That's what happened to me, and I couldn't understand it. Now, there's a basic law that said everything in life is either growing or dying. It's either create or disintegrate. So you're never going to stay where you are. Your results are going to get better or they're going to get worse. It's create or disintegrate. No one stays where they are. Now, the truth is, I think most people get a little better and a little worse. A little better and a little worse. When they get a little better, they're forcing it. But force negates. You see, there's something inside of you that's urging you to grow. This is the spiritual side of our personality. It's the essence of our being. And spirit's always for expansion and fuller expression. There's something in you that wants you to grow. If you run, you want to run faster. If you jump, you want to jump higher. If you sell, you want to sell more. This is good. It causes dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction is a creative state. My grandmother pretty well raised me, and she taught me that I should be satisfied with what I've got. Grandma was wrong. I should be happy with what I've got, but never satisfied. It's dissatisfaction that gave us the incandescent light. It's dissatisfaction that gave us air travel. It's dissatisfaction that gave us the Internet. All those things were always here. People just became aware of them. The way to fly an airplane was always here. We can go all over the world now. We're not a long ways from anywhere. We're only a short period of time away. Well, there's something inside wanting us to grow. There's something else that's trying to stop us. And that's the old paradigm. Now, after the break, I'm going to show you how that paradigm is formed and how we can change it. Yet it's, like, it's just like magic. And when you do, your whole life changes. Everything in your life changes. Just no question about it. Now, you've got the one side that wants you to grow and the other side that doesn't want you to grow. The old paradigm does not want you to grow. Anyone that has smoked and quit smoking, I used to smoke. I quit years ago. But I remember it wasn't an easy thing to do. It was not, why? Because it was a habit. Habits are not easy to get rid of. Habits are ideas that are fixed in here that control us. Many of you have gone on diets. You want to lose weight. I'll just toss something in for your benefit. When you lose something, you're programmed to do what? To look for it. Get rid of the idea of losing weight. Release it. Release it. See yourself at your perfect weight, looking good and feeling great. Your whole life is controlled by images. Get the image of the body that you want to live in, of the world you want. Quit trying to lose weight. Just release it and see yourself the way you want to be. Now, goals determine which side wins. The goal must be something you really want. Towards the end of the, uh, of the program today, I'm going to show you the difference between going after what you know you can do, what you think you can do, and what you want. And I'm going to show you why most people never go after what they want. And I'll also show you how to change it, because it's pretty beautiful. Now, at each new level, as we move ahead, every time we move ahead, our conditions, our circumstance, and environment change. As they change, you have to adapt to the change. That gives you the ability, then, to see the next step of action that's necessary. We'll graphically communicate that a little clearer a little later on. Okay? So here we go. We're moving up. Each time we move to a higher level, the results improve. And it just keeps getting better and better and better.
And that's the way life should work, and it can work. Now, you and I think in pictures. We think in pictures, okay? You don't think B-O-A-T. You don't think G-E-A-R. You don't think F-B-A-T-H or B-I-R-D. You think in pictures. You think in pictures. Now, it's the mind we're talking about. I want you to tell me what your mind looks like. What's your refrigerator look like, John? What color is it? White. White. Two doors? Yes. Top and bottom? Yes. Which way do they open? To right to left or left to the right? Left to right. Left to right. Now, you were mentally in your kitchen looking at your refrigerator, weren't you? What's your car look like? White. White? You like white, do <laughs> yeah? what's, what's the interior? Charcoal gray. Charcoal gray. Two door, four door? Five. Five doors. Okay. You've got the picture of that in here, haven't you? Tell me what your mind looks like. Gray mush. <laughs> now you're doing what probably a lot of people are doing. How many saw the brain when I asked you to think of the mind? Hold up your hand if you did. See, there's a whole lot of people doing the same thing. But your brain is not your mind, John. And your brain is not your mind. Your brain is an electronic switching station. That enables you, by using certain cells in your brain, to alter the vibration that this body's in. The brain is an electronic switching station. No one has ever seen the mind, and that is why most people have such great problem. Because we think in picture. Now, when there's no picture, John, there's confusion. If there's confusion inside, you can make book on the fact there's going to be confusion outside. As we bring the picture to our mind, we bring order to our mind. What did Solomon say? Where there is no vision, the people will perish. Where there's no vision, there's no order. Where there's no order, there's no growth. Well, when you come back, I'm going to give you a picture to work with. And that is what changed my life as much as anything. As I started to see how to work with my conscious and subconscious. Do you know certain things about your subconscious mind? Because you've read about them, you've heard about them, you listen to it on tape. But without a picture, it's just words. You see, when I asked you to think of your car, John, I activated vocal cords, I made a sound, it's called language or words, it was actually a light message, your hearing sense picked up that light message. It was rifle fired down a nerve passageway in your body. It struck a group of cells in your brain that that sound resonated with, all electrical. Those cells increased in amplitude of vibration, and the picture that was in them flashed on the screen of the mind, and you saw the white car and the charcoal gray interior. When I asked you to think of your refrigerator, light message struck those cells in your brain, the picture came on the screen of the mind. When I asked you to think of your mind, you saw your brain, and yet your brain is in your mind. Your brain is in your fingernail. It's in your kneecap. And you know something? You'll never enjoy health if, you don't really be able, if you're not able to get a picture of the mind. You'll never enjoy health. Because good health is when a body is in a good vibration. It vibrates in harmony with God's laws. Most doctors do not understand this. We have taught this to a lot of doctors, and it changes their practice like night and day. It'll change your communications. If you're in sales and you don't understand the law, you're on a hit and miss basis and it'll probably be more miss than hit. When you understand the law of vibration, you're going to understand that you're transmitting through the medium of the molecule pictures into the other person's mind. And you want to put pictures in their mind that are favorable to them if you want them to be favorable to you.